Hello everybody, my name is David. Thank you for joining me. Today is the Q&A Monday where I'm doing, where I'm answering all of you guys' questions from the last Monday. Uh, any questions you guys have today, please go down below into the comment section, ask me anything you want. I'll answer them in the next Q&A next Monday. So, what I like to do is, before I answer everybody's questions, I like to make a recommendation. It could be uh, a book or just the author or maybe some other channel or some things you can take, supplements, things like that. Today I'd like to recommend uh, a real easy, simple reading list, an article by Stephen Aitchison. Don't know if I'm saying his last name right, but I will leave the um, link to this down below in the description box for people that want to follow it and would like to raise their self-worth. This uh, article is called 29 Ways to Increase Your Self-Worth. I was inspired to give this to you guys today by your questions. So if you would like to raise your self-worth, which I think everybody should try to always be doing, uh, follow this link if you'd like some advice on how to do that. Uh, what else do I like to do here? I like to welcome new subscribers, new viewers. Uh, if you guys could help me and what I'm doing is I'm just trying to get information uh, as available as I can for victims of narcissistic abuse so that they can find some peace, some happiness, get away from their abuser, not date or be around abusers anymore, not commit suicide, things like this. If you could help me by just pressing some buttons and subscribing to the channel, uh, up or down voting for the video, ask me questions, um, post this on different uh, social media accounts, groups, forums, stuff like that would be a big help. Thank you. So let's get started with the questions. First one is from Vanessa in Guatemala. And uh, I didn't have time to answer your question last time, so I'm going to answer it today. Thank you for being patient, Vanessa. So Vanessa asks, why am I the one that always looks for him? I feel like I am the narcissist, always begging for forgiveness. If we fight, I feel guilty. He always gives me the silent treatment. I promise I would change everything he didn't like about me. I made mistakes. I feel like it's all my fault. Why has he not hoovered me? So Vanessa, this is about self-worth, what I was talking about. This is putting your self-worth in somebody else's hands. You know, like how we let somebody else determine our fate and our future. Well, you're letting this person determine your self-worth, Vanessa. So there's 29 ways to raise your self-worth, but always make sure that what you're doing, that your choices that you're making are saying that you're worth it, increasing your own self-worth. So begging for forgiveness, lower self-worth. Um, he gives you the silent treatment and you accept that. That's lower self-worth. You say you, you, you believe that you're worth that. You promise you would change everything he didn't like about you. Oh my gosh, everything? Jeez, y your hair? Your face, your body, who you are, gosh, your principles, your values, your morals, would you change those too, Vanessa? Self-worth is, is, is affected deeply by shame. Low self-worth is, is because of shame, feeling unworthy, bad people, like a bad person. We must in get rid of shame. I can tell you two different ways to get rid of shame. One, talk about it with somebody. Process these feelings and understand what happened so that you don't believe that you're a bad person. So you know the truth. Because the truth is that you're not a bad person. You feel like it because you don't understand. That's one thing. Another, friends, loved ones, relationships. You need more of them. Better ones, secure friendships. That helps shame go away, okay? and get rid of this person in your life. Breaking up with this person, saying, I will never talk to you again, don't ever talk to me again, will raise your self-worth, right? Good luck. Get people to help you, you need support. Uh, S. Bolgen from Darby, Pennsylvania. Hello, if my ex beat my old daughter, I'm sorry, if my ex beat my older daughter and myself, will he beat and do the same thing to the next supply? I hope so, huh? That's awful. I'm kidding. That was a joke. 
I know some of us kind of were like, yeah, I hope so, but no, not really, no, we don't want anyone else getting hurt, but gosh, why would he just beat me? Why would he just beat my daughter? And not, the, not any, another person, right? I deserve that? Am I worth that? Is that my worth? You're letting somebody else determine that again. See that? So this is a common question, a general, the, this is specific, but you're generally asking, will the person that abused me and did me wrong and cheated on me and lied to me and didn't care about me and didn't really love me and left me and discarded me like I was a piece of garbage, will they do that to the very next person that they're smiling with in the photo on Facebook? Will they, will they hate them and punish them and cheat on them and lie to them and all this stuff? I, I don't know. Probably. I would bet on it. I mean, that's not something I'd want to bet on. That's gross. But, I mean, you can bet on it. Look, disordered people that abuse people, they, they don't just abuse someone and then have another relationship right away and say, I don't want to abuse this person. I'm going to be healthy. I'm going to have a happy, healthy, good relationship with this person for a while, maybe maybe six months, maybe six years, not sure yet, but it's gonna be healthy, it's gonna be happy, it's gonna be great. Yeah, until I'm done, and then it, I will abuse them. It doesn't work like that, do you see that? Abuse is unhealthy, and then being happy and fun and meeting people's needs and respect and, and being honest and truthful and being vulnerable and all these things, that's healthy. They can't do those things. They can't be healthy. It's not, it's not a choice, guys. If we date abusers, we're unhealthy too. That's why I tell you guys, don't start dating someone right away after you're being abused. If you're being abused, you don't know how to have a good relationship. Or you feel so bad about yourself, you think you're not worth one. So the next relationship you get in won't work, I promise. If you don't do any work. If you don't really work all this stuff out. They need to also. A lot. I can't imagine the work they would need to do to fix themselves, huh? Imagine. I'm just saying. Let's just say there is a cure. It's, it couldn't be overnight. It would have to take years to fix them. If, they're, if they can be. Okay? I hope that makes sense. Look at how awful and upset we are. Look how bad we're doing. I know they act like it doesn't matter and they don't care, but they have things wrong with them that they need to fix before they can go and have a happy, healthy relationship. Who are they going to have? A, they're just going to go date someone healthy and happy too? They don't do that either. They can't. Somebody happy and healthy and loves themselves would not date someone like that. Wouldn't date someone disordered. Narcissists have low, the lowest self-esteem ever. They don't have self-respect. They don't respect other people. They don't emotionally connect with people. Happy, healthy people emotionally connect. So here they are trying to have a relationship with a narcissist who won't connect with them. Besides all the other weird red flag behaviors that we put up with. Because we aren't healthy at the time. But we can get healthy and I don't know what they can do. But it's going to take a long time for them to change their behavior. So they're not going right from really bad abuse uh, right to a very happy, healthy relationship. It's not going to happen. So if they abuse you, they're going to abuse the next person. Period. Period. If, they, if they're not going to, you tell me why. why. Why wouldn't they? What did they do? They went and saw doctors, therapists, psychiatrists. They went to school. They, what did they do? Why would they, why would they be so unhealthy and sick and abuse people and then just stop? God? Nah. Hope that makes sense. It's just not going to happen, guys. A lot of work needs to be done. We need a lot of work. Imagine all the work they need. Everybody needs work, but the... Hurt people hurt people. If they're hurting people, it's because they hurt so bad inside. They need to fix that. And it's not because they met someone tall, pretty, cute, lots of money. doesn't matter. It's them. It's inside. It has nothing to do with the person they're with. It had nothing to do with you. Their disorder has nothing to do with you. 
and has nothing to do with the person they were dating before you and has nothing to do with the person they're with now or in 10 years. It doesn't matter who they're with or is around them. It's not the person's fault around them. It's not, was it your fault? It has nothing to do with you. Their disorder has, let me say it again, their personality disorder has nothing to do with you. Their abuse is a fighting struggle that they have inside them. It's problems they have inside. It's their problems, not yours. They made it yours. They tried to, didn't they? They caused you a lot of problems, but it's not your problem to fix or to help or to feel guilty about or to feel sorry for them about. It's for them to fix, period. Joa, I hope I'm saying that right, from Belgium. How can, how can we escape the narcissist's mental control when he destroys our self-esteem all the time? Why do they not block us on social media when they're with someone else? Is this hoovering? So first question, how can we escape the narcissist's mental control when he destroys our self-esteem all the time? It's hard, isn't it? That's the point. They want to break you down so you don't leave them. So you say, I'm not worth it. I'm worth taking their, their abuse. I'm a piece of crap. I'm such a bad person. I deserve this. They want you to do that. Right? Uh, it's like hobbling. How do we keep prisoners here? We break their feet or something, right? So they can't run away. That's what they want to do, right? So I guess we got to take that step that first scary step into the unknown. I would do it with, with people holding our hands if you need to, okay? Uh, why do they not block us on social media when they're with someone else? Is this hoovering? That seems like it, doesn't it? It's uh, keep a foot in the door. It's posturing. I always call what they do on social media is posturing. If they block you, you can't see. You can't see them be happy with someone else. See, look, I'm happy. I win, I win. <laughs> the idea is to not look anyways and raise your self-worth by not looking. Lower your self-worth by looking. Huh? See, you're making choices. Be conscious of your choices. They do matter. Fit Mama Roberta from the Bay Area. Hello. What are your views on social media and narcissists? I use it for self-love and my life kind of stuff. I think you're rare. I think most people use social media for posturing. I think a lot of people on social media believe that if I look happy, I am happy. Therefore, I am. Huh? No. Nope, doesn't work like that. That's called ego. So, I think narcissists use social media for posturing. So, that's attention, right? They think I'm so great, right? Uh, show off my jewelry. Show off my cars. Show off my job. Uh, show off what a great person I am. I knew a narcissist that buried his dog and took pictures of it and posted it all on Facebook. And then the next year, he reposted them again. And then, and then like two years later, he reposted them again. Like he just reburied his dog again. It's like, dude, what are you digging this thing up every year? It's like, we don't need to share so much on Facebook. If we do need to share so much of what we're doing on Facebook, there's a problem. We're getting external validation. That will never be enough. You will find yourself doing it over and over and over and over again. I noticed that there's some people that change their photos maybe never or once every once in a while, and then there's some people that change their photos every other day. Do you notice that? <laughs> they change it 25 times, and guess what? They just want to change it again. They also use it for hunting. Yeah. I know tons of uh, victims who met their narcissist on Facebook. Uh, what's another one? God, the... Um, I hate when I can't remember something when I'm recording a video. Um, social media. God, you guys know. It's not... Uh, it's not Instagram. It's the one that's more business-oriented. I know you're all, everyone's going to tell me. 
Um, but yeah, people meet their narcissists on these things too. <clears throat> they can, and this is true, a lot of uh, predators, they like social media accounts. They like um, uh, dating sites and stuff like that. They can check you out before they contact you. They can find out what you like, what you don't like, things like this. Old relationships, how your family is, you have any children, how much money do you make, things like this. Uh, they can find stuff out like this before they contact you. Uh, narcissists, a lot of them are, can be very poor communicators. They have very low self-esteem. It's harder for them maybe to go right up and introduce themselves to somebody nice. You know, I can approach them on social media first and show them pictures of myself and see if they like me first. Break the ice. They are nervous. Right? Uh, let's see. All right. Let's, let's do one more. From sunny San Jose, California. Hello, Sunny. I watched a video where someone said processing emotions helps break the trauma bond. How does one, going, how does one go about starting on that journey? I think I'm, I'm happy, really happy to see questions like this. I, I, I am that we want to actually do something about it and grow and learn and stuff. So, whoever said the processing emotions, you should do it to help the trauma bond, you should do it all the time. Healthy people do it all the time and don't even think about it. Natural thing, kind of. I have a four-step process for processing emotion. I'll write it down. One, what? And, and let me tell you guys, processing emotions is absolutely necessary. And I know that anyone who dates an abuser doesn't do this. So if you all have been abused, you don't do this. I promise you don't do this and you need to. This is about, this is called emotional responsibility. First thing, emotions is your body doing stuff. That's it. Feelings are awareness of what it is. Emotions is just your body doing stuff. First one, I made up this by the way. You're gonna find this, and you might find something similar to this, but one, what is the emotion? What is it? Be sure, 34,000 different emotions. It could be something else. You could be mistaken, you better be sure. I know some people that don't know. I know some people that, that just go, I don't know, my body's doing this and this, I don't know what it is. That's scary, oh God. That, that would be awful feeling. And that's what happens if you don't, it could happen. It, that's, a, that's, a, that's, that's because that person did not process emotions. What is the emotion? What is your body doing? Is it fear or is it just anxiety? See, fear, you know what it is. Anxiety, it's unknown. There's a difference. You got to know. I want to know. Number two, why? Number two, why? What is it from? Where is it from? Why do I feel this way? Right? I feel scared. Why? Why do I feel scared? Okay. Third. Third is can I do something about it? You, 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 it's not all the time that you can. You may not be able to, and you need to know. Because this is ruminating, right? Ruminating? Oh, God, I feel anxiety. Oh, I'm going to think about what this person, oh, what are they doing? Who are they doing it with? Oh, God, dude, what, am I, what can I do about it to get them back? Or should I do something? Should I do something about it? I better do something about it tonight if I don't do something. No, you can't do anything about it. They're off with someone else. Nothing you can do. You can't change or control that. See, can I do something about it? If you can't, throw it out. This process will help you stop dwelling. It's going to be hard at first. You, it's going to come right back around, right in front of you again, and you're going to feel it in a few seconds, and you have to keep throwing it out. You have to keep yourself busy, do something. Can I do something about it? If you can't, throw it out. If you can, always do something. Always do something. Always do something about it. It's your body. You're responsible for it. 
That's processing emotion. This is how we this is, this is how we absolve bad emotions, bad things, scary things. This is how we are aware of what makes us feel good when you do it again. Narcissists can't make themselves feel good. They don't process emotions. They don't realize this feels good, this feels bad. They try to ignore. And so do we, right? We do too. Not that different in that, in that aspect, huh? So, why is it important, going to your thing here, why is it important to process emotions to break the trauma bond? What's a trauma bond? Addiction. We're addicted to, to the rise and fall of our hormones. We're addicted to the relationship. We're addicted to, I love you. Let's get married. I want to be with you forever. To, I hate you. Never see you again. I'm with someone else now. I love you again. Back again. Let's do it all over again. I love you so much. And I hate you. You stink. Okay? Boom, 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 boom. I love it. I love this. Keep doing this. Keep doing this. Trauma bond. Why do we need to process emotions? Because this sucks. This doesn't feel good. This sucks. This feels like crap. I, why am I doing this to myself? Oh, because I love them. Are you sure? You love them? Let's... Are you sure? You sure that's what that is? If it is... Why? Why do you love them? Write it down. Because you don't. You don't. You don't love them. We need to be aware. We need cognition, right? We need as much information as we can. We need to know the truth. We need to process our emotions. We need to have the correct feelings. We need to be aware of what our body is doing and be correct. I love them. I need them. Really, you need this? You need, you need them to abuse you. You need them to cheat on you. You love that. You love when they're with someone else. Or just the breaks they take with someone else and then they're with you. You love them for that. Come on. We've been lying to ourselves too long. So we, we need to process emotion to help break the trauma bond. Yeah. Because the reason we're trauma bonded is because we don't process emotion. We need to do it all the time. I get my clients to do it all the time. How do you feel? How do you feel? How do you feel? I don't ask, what are you doing? I hate that question. What are you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing? Who cares? I don't care what you're doing or how you do it. I care about how you feel about it. I know some people who grew up never been asked that question. Okay, I'm going to save the rest for part two, guys. Thank you for watching. If you could please help me by voting, um, asking questions, commenting, and posting this video somewhere else. Thank you, guys. Love yourself first. I'll see you in part two. Bye-bye.